I've made this video to help home builders with that tedious task of finishing the wings. I have a Europa aircraft and it has a foam wing which is covered in fiberglass. You can see it here, I've covered it with uh, filler. Uh, in most cases it would be micro balloon, but the Europa calls for thermoplastic. Whatever filler it is, it just requires the builder to sand it back and uh, during the process of sanding back when you've uh, reached completion is that you end up with a whole bunch of pinholes, scrape marks and imperfections. The normal method would be just to fill those uh, imperfections with more filler and then you sand back. The problem with that is that uh, the process of sanding back creates more pinholes and more scratches and imperfections. So it seems to be a never-ending process of, of filling and sanding, filling and sanding. But I came across this method which was posted online from Sam Hoskins and I'll provide a link below. He called it the epoxy wipe method where he would apply pure epoxy up to six applications which would cover all the pinholes and scrape marks and any other imperfections. And I thought it was a great method and it had potential to save a lot of time. But what I found was that when the final layer had fully cured, scuffing it back with uh, 240 grit sandpaper just was such an effort because the paper clogged all the time and it was almost unworkable. I contacted the good folk at West Systems whose epoxy I'd use for my project and, and they advised me that I probably had something called amine blush. Now what that is, it's uh, amine is a, a product that they put in the hardener and uh, when it finally cures, especially if it cures in cold conditions where it takes more time to go off and then meets with humid air or carbon dioxide, you get a product called amine blush which is deposited on the outside of the uh, of the epoxy and uh, generally it makes it really hard to sand because it clogs the sandpaper. I'll let you see what I did uh, to help resolve that. I'd like to show you what happens when you get amine blush happening. I've used the epoxy wipe method on my Europa wing that's it there so there is a uh, basically a clear coat of epoxy here but because it was uh, set in a cold evening and probably with high humidity I'm getting amine blush and this is what happens uh, when you get it and uh, hopefully it'll help you recognize it here I've got a, a, a new piece of sandpaper uh, it's about 240 grit and uh, I just wanted uh, to, to scuff the surface getting it ready for primer, but this is what happens. Just a bit of light scuffing. And I can feel it already that there is some more friction on the sandpaper than I would expect. And there you have it. All those bits there our aim in blush and it doesn't take long and the, the paper is completely ruined and you're unable to to use it any further what i'm going to do now is to uh, get rid of the aim in blush simply by applying water and uh, a scouring pad and uh, from what i'm led to believe that's supposed to get rid of the aim in blush because it's water soluble so uh, i'll let you know how, what happens here is another example of how amine blush looks on another piece of sandpaper that I used. This one was 120 grit, but as you can see, it's fairly clogged and you're really unable to use it only after maybe 30 seconds of use. So it's a real problem. So I'll be using just some warm water in a bucket and a scotch bright uh, scouring pad. I'll be just dipping it in the water and applying it to the whole surface. I'm just working through one section at a time 
and I think it's working because there is a sort of a milky liquid that's coming from that and I'm hoping that's the uh, amine blush being dissolved and removed. Well I think something is happening the water that I'm using to rinse with has become extremely milky so something is definitely coming off. So what I noticed when you first start sanding a particular section well scuffing I should say it feels rather smooth like there's a gloss there which uh, you can see but as you start uh, continuing the uh, the scuffing it starts to get a little bit um, you can feel the friction it's not quite as easy to uh, to scuff and I think that is some of the uh, that bloom that's coming off so I think that's how you can tell that uh, you're being successful so this is the bucket of water that I use to scuff my wing now you'll see that uh, whatever's come off the wing there must be some particulates in there in addition to uh, stuff which is water soluble because as I move this around you can see all those particulates moving to the surface so all that was removed through the, uh, the scruffing method okay, so here's a big test I finished scuffing the whole wing and I've allowed it to dry I just uh, wiped it off with a, um, a chamois to get rid of any moisture and now I'm going to sand a bit of area here with uh, brand new 240 grit sandpaper and just see if the clogging still happens. Here we go. Now after this long, if you remember, the sandpaper was pretty clogged and we couldn't use it. Hey, hey, look at that. Just a bit of dust. I think it's working, guys. Okay, um, I'll leave it at that. So just adding a little bit more information to that. The amine blush didn't come off 100%, but I think I got rid of at least 95% of it, and it made sanding so much easier. What was left, you could easily get rid of with a wire brush, and it became much easier for uh, the process to continue. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.